uh, we are going to be learning about what the various rhetorical devices are. There are many of these out here. And uh, we're going to look at the three aspects of speech, ethos, pathos, and logos. And we're going to be uh, looking at a couple of speeches to get accustomed to that. OK. All right. Uh, so let's begin first. So throughout this course, you will be studying many speeches and the context in which they are spoken. You'll be asked to consider what makes a speech engaging for its audience. What makes it engaging for its audience? Okay. Great speeches are full of interesting rhetorical devices, several of which will be explored in this unit. But most important in your study of speeches is to explore the potential effects of these devices and on the audience. So what are the devices used and the impacts of these devices? Um, okay, so let's start off with first learning some of the devices. So the first one is anaphora. Anaphora is what? The repetition of words or phrases at the beginning of a sentence. So ask not what your, your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? Okay. That is an anaphora. Yeah. Second, diacopa. So the repetition of a phrase after an intervening word or phrase such as free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, free at last. So diacopa is basically the repetition of a word or a phrase. Okay, throughout the sentence or throughout the speech. Anaphora is at the beginning of the speech. That is the difference between the two, di diacopa and uh, anaphora. Okay, yeah. there are similar things with that basic difference. Okay, so we will uh, have no truce or parley with you or the grizzly gang who work with your wicked will. Okay, Winston Churchill. All right, third one antithesis. So, antithesis means something that you're saying is that is contradictory to your point to actually make your point. Okay. So uh, few were chosen. We can say that, right? We can just say few were chosen. But if we write many were called and few were chosen, so then the emphasis on the few were chosen increases because many were called. You understand it? So yeah. it's a contrasting opposing ideas that is used to bring out the main idea. So uh, we shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. Excuse me, Winston Churchill. So, uh, what is antithesis? Oh, okay. Now, explain what is antithesis. What have you understood from antithesis? Antithesis. Yeah. Um, two opposing sides in consideration. Like uh, it could be two opinions also. Two opinions, right? So uh, the first nine no, aren't given in order. I think they are, this is not an antithesis. Okay, option three is not an antithesis. Let's just read one second. How much you already know about rhetorical devices? Nine rhetorical devices are introduced here in the matching exercise. That's what I was wondering. Match the quotations in the left column with the rhetorical devices and counter examples on the right. So an anaphora, out of all these nine, which one is an anaphora? Have a look at all the nine in your book and tell me out of which of these nine sentences is, which one is an anaphora, the first type. Repetition of word or phrase at the beginning of the sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and... That's what I'm saying. These three. these three, these left column is not in order. You have to match it with the right column. So you know what an anaphora is. So which one is an anaphora in the left column? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, hmm. I think three will be anaphora. We shall fight, we shall fight, we shall fight, we shall fight. Excellent. So C is your anaphora. Okay. B, diacopa. Okay. Uh, we are... Okay, one second. Let me see if C is the anaphora or the diacopa. Let me see if you have to say. Uh, 
I think it would be it would be uh, one. For B, it will be one, and for C, it will be two. C, you think it's two, and for this, you think it's one. Uh, one. The repetition of words or phrases at the beginning of a sentence. Anaphora. Five is an anaphora. Okay. Yeah. The people everywhere, not just here in Britain, everywhere. So repetition of a word at the beginning of the sentence is an anaphora, right? So it should be five. B, Diacopa, the repetition of a phrase after an intervening word. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. Uh, this is option three. Got it. We shall fight, we shall fight. Then there's a sentence, and in the streets, and then we shall fight. Got it. It's the similar structure as given in the example. Free at last, free at last, a sentence, then free at last. Got it? Yeah. So, uh, Diacopa here would be uh, three. Okay. Antithesis. Contrasting two opposing ideas in a sentence. Many were called, few were chosen. You can do. We have no true Sapali with you. Or your physically grand you. Let's look at the other sentence. I can... It would be option four. Okay. This will be option four. Okay, next. Uh, chiasmus. What is a chiasmus? The inversion of parts of sentences in sequence, such as fair is foul, found is fair. Okay. So that would be six, right? Yeah. One step for man, or one small step for man, one huge leap for mankind. So inversion of parts of the sentences in sequence, fair is foul, foul is fair, inversion of it. Small step for man, huge for mankind. Actually, no. Okay, fine, let's go through it. Uh, Anna di uh, plosis, the repetition of the last word of a sentence as the first word of the next sentence, such as, they call for you, the general who became a slave, the slave who became a gladiator. Okay. Uh, it's number nine. Okay. Anna diplosis. Okay. Amplification. The repetition of a word or phrase with the addition of more detail in order to emphasize something. So America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked. Okay. Um This one is, option one is an amplification. Okay, metaphor, the comparison of two things by speaking of one in terms of the other, such as the mother of all battles. Okay, so the mother, the biggest battle, metaphor. So, uh, Motion and the God shall give a new birth of freedom. Okay, that is not a metaphor.
It's two. Two is a metaphor. Okay. Alliteration. The repetition of the same sound or letter at the beginning of several words in a sequence, such as let us go forth to lead the land we love. Repetition of the same sound or letter. Sound. Uh, that would be eight. So what's left? One, two, three, four, five, six is left. Okay, tricolon, a list of three, or a sentence with three parts or clauses. I came, I saw, I conquered. No, but six, there's only two clauses. Six is already done. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This nation. Okay. Under God shall have a new birth of freedom. Okay. And that government of the people by the people of the people shall not perish from the earth. So which one is the tricolon here in this particular passage? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Which one is the tricolon here? Tricolon. Uh... Out of all the options given, which one is the tricolon? That would be. Eh, can you scroll down, please? I think that would be. Uh, mm, I saw. Mm, mm, See one, one list three. Uh, country, country. He does it two times. He says country two times. Yes, so it has to be three, right? So what is the third one? In under God, we shall have people, people, people. So this will be seven. Okay. Now I want you to give me an example of all these. Anaphora, diacopa. Uh, give me an example of an anaphora. Anaphora. Uh, Fission is given. So, uh, think of a sentence which represents an anaphora. Uh, everybody uh, has faith in the king. So out here, what is given? I have a dream. Okay, if you look at that speech, you know, I have a dream speech. He tells, I have a dream that one day, you know, black and white men will be looked at equally. I have a dream where one day black and white men will uh, go to the same colleges. I have a dream where, uh, you know, uh, black and white people will be on the same sports teams. So this, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. The repetition of this phrase just results in an anaphora. Got it? Yes. Are you clear what an anaphora is? Yes, it, I am clear. So uh, I think I should do this. I think I should do that. And I think I should do this. If you write three sentences with the word I think at the beginning, then the repetition of that word or phrase at the beginning of that sentence makes it an anaphora. Okay. Uh, diacopa, the repetition of a phrase after an intervening word or phrase, such as free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. So, uh, give an example of a diacopa. What do you think? Oh, uh, I remember like when I was in Egypt, they said like once uh, people got out of the, the, what do you say, the tomb, they said, oh, finally uh, at last we're done, you know, or they say, what a workout. Okay, so, uh, okay, fine. So that is just one part. You're just talking about the free at last bit. Okay, the last bit. Did while in the tomb, while you all were, were you all in the, inside the tomb, were you all telling free at last, free at last? No. Yeah. Okay. So after you came out of the tomb, you're like free at last, free at last, thank God. We got, we escaped the means. So it would be the reaction you gave after you came out of the tomb, not inside it. 
inside let's say if it was a scary tomb then you'll say ah, ah. you were tensed and all that right so that's yeah. why when you came out you're like uh thank god got free we came out of that place we got free so uh dia copa is basically you it's the same as an anaphora but basically it's not at the beginning of a set simple okay we were we were going around the maze and the pyramid and then we came out thank god we came out thank god we came out the maze was a very complicated uh, maze thank god we came out so that second sentence which i told you would be your dia copa yeah okay. antithesis is contrasting two things so can you give me an example of antithesis antithesis uh, antithesis uh, let's say um if you're from the democratic party you will have a certain ideology on uh, let's say border crossings and if you're from the republican party you have a certain idea about you know border laws and policies Oh, like but then uh, so you're telling opposing qualities yeah so uh being self selfish is the antithesis of love yeah you can use it in that way also okay so love is what you have to be selfless and being selfish is the antithesis of it so an opposing word okay chiasmus what's a chiasmus the inversion of parts of a sentence in a sequence so can you give a uh, example of a chiasmus Uh, a chiasmus. Yeah. Mm. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. But uh, um, I don't know. The, the, this part of the book is like very weird for me. Like uh, I have to think about something. I cannot. Yeah. Think. So think about it. I'm not telling you it should be in your head, top of your head. Make a sentence which is a key aspect. If you uh, pay your toll, I will take your soul. Or you pay. If you don't pay your toll, I will take your soul. Okay. Excellent. That's a key aspect. If you don't pay your toll, I will take your soul. Okay. Anything else? Um, no. Uh, she has my love, and my heart belongs to her. That is also a key aspect. Okay. It is not does doesn't mean it has to be opposite in meaning. Understand? That's what I just wanted to tell you. uh you're just focusing on an antithesis or a chiasmus rather being something like an antithesis it is not an antithesis it is an inversion of the sentence so fair is foul foul is fair the sentence is inverted okay so uh love is tricky and uh to uh, you know tricking is part of love that would be a chiasmus just an inversion of the first half that's it okay okay uh all right uh ana diplosis what is it the repetition of the last word of a sentence as the first word of the next sentence so they call for you the general who became a slave the slave who became a gladiator the gladiator who defied the empire apple so ana diplosis give me an example of that ana diplosis is the repet the last word has to be repeated in the next sentence um so, uh, i like playing football football is the most popular sport in the world i like um, playing football comma football is the most popular sport in the world that is a ana diplosis um i like going to school school is my home school is my home okay fine yeah school is my or school is a regular activity anything you can write i like going to school and the comma school is a regular activity so if the last word is used as the first word in the next bit you
call it an additive process. Simple. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, amplification. So the repetition of a word or phrase with the addition of more detail in order to emphasize some. So the example given here is America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which must come, which has come back um, marked insufficient funds. So the second part is describing something given in the first part a bit more in depth. So the war was a uh, gruesome one. It resulted in the, or uh, it uh, resulted in the killing of 4 million uh, innocent Jews. That is an amplification. Okay, why was the war gruesome? Because it resulted in the killing of 4, or 4 million innocent Jews. Got it. So you're amplifying the fact of the war being gruesome by providing a fact, making it more gruesome. Yeah. Okay, so the war was gruesome um, and uh, it was amplified by the fact that Four million Jews were killed. All right. Uh, metaphor. What is a metaphor? The comparison of two things by speaking of one in terms of the other. It's a mother of all battles. Okay, tell me a metaphor. Metaphors are to, uh, something you should be familiar with. Um, metaphor. Okay, a metaphor could be something like. Uh, um, like you've heard the phrase cry me a river. I'm sorry? Cry me a river. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're crying so much, it's like there's a river flowing down. So you're comparing a flow of a river to the tears flowing. Um you could say uh my shoes smell like garbage. Excellent. You're comparing the smell of a garbage to the smell of your shoe. Excellent. I'm feeling blue. So you're comparing the color blue and the feeling associated with it with your present mood. Okay, so metaphor is a comparison of two things, okay, by speaking of one in terms of the other. All right. What is an alliteration? The repetition of the same sound or letter at the beginning of several words in a sequence. Okay, so uh, what do you think? Give an example of an alliteration. An uh, alliteration would be something like uh, alliteration, right? Hmm. Uh, alliteration. So the same sound has to be repeated. Okay, yeah. throughout the sentence. So you could say, uh, like, uh, you could say, she says. She sells seashells at the seashore. You could say, uh, like, uh, if I have a alliteration. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's say, uh, I can say I have a uh, salty strawberry salsa. Like, yes. it's a food. And yes. it's like. That is an alliteration. You're using the same sound. Okay, the same con uh, you know vocation as you go along. So, uh, a good cook can bake cookies or cook cookies of all variety. So, a good cook bake cookies, good cookies. So, you're using the same sound, the same vocational sound. That is what we call an alliteration when the same sound is repeated. Okay, all right. Uh, Tricolon, give an example of a tricolon. Tricolon could be something like a, a, a saying, like a, it could be like. Uh, you can teach a man, uh, you can buy a man a fish for a day, or you can teach him how to fish and feed him for a lifetime. You can buy a fish for a man and feed him for a day, or you can teach them how to fish and feed them for a lifetime. Okay. You can, you can teach a man how to fish. You can buy fish for a man. Okay. Uh, so out here, the example is given is a bit simpler. I came, I saw, I conquered. So uh, something similar to that, can you give? Uh, 
I came and I saw my brother eating all my cookies. Mm, like okay. that. that can be used. Okay. Um, generally, there are a few types of uh, tricolons. Okay. Uh, Veni, Vidi, or Vici. Okay. So Veni means I came, uh, Vidi means I saw, and Vici means I conquered. Uh, so, uh, Citius, Altius, and Fortius. That could be a tricolon sentence. Uh, basically, you're using three parallel words, one after the other. Parallel words means words that are similar to each other, like uh, ethos, logos, and pathos. That's a tricolon uh, you know, set. You can use that in a sentence. So our ethos was this, our pathos was this, and logos was this. Yeah. Uh, one second. I'll give you an example from a speech. Let me just... Uh, yeah, so I require three things in a man. He must be handsome, ruthless, and stupid. That is a tricolon set. Okay, three clauses. He must be handsome, he must be uh, ruthless, and he must be stupid. Okay. Or uh, you can write uh, in The Wizard of Oz, if you have read that book, it says... Uh, you are talking to a man who has laughed in the face of death, sneered at doom, and chuckled at catastrophe. So three things are being done. Like laughed in the face of death, stared at doom, and chuckled at catastrophe. So whenever you see anything three, in mentioned in three sets of three, assume it's a tricolor. Yeah. Okay? So you have to, uh, these things you have to just look up a bit. Okay. You have to look up like 10, 10 examples of each. Okay, so 10 examples of amplification, then only you'll get the idea of what it is. Okay, the full idea.